It's been a month since I picked this up and after spending some time with it, I'm finally ready to tell you what I think about it. Hey guys, it's Beatrice back with another video just for you. Welcome back to the channel. It is so good to see you guys here. And today we're going to be talking about this tiny shotgun microphone. So Sony sent me the ECMG one along with the ZVE-10 so I can try out this lightweight vlogging setup. I have almost exclusively been vlogging and documenting the past month on this setup. And here's what you need to know about it so far. The Sony ECMG one is one of the three shotgun microphones that Sony has on its lineup. It's also the most compact one among the three, which makes it the easiest to carry around. Not that the other two are hard to carry around, this just significantly smaller. It has a built-in shock mount which helps reduce handling noise, a multi-interface shoe for easy connection within the Sony ecosystem. More on that later because that's actually kind of cool. It also has a mic output so you can connect it to other devices such as your phones, laptops, and other cameras. Now as a whole, this microphone blew my mind because when you attach it to the multi-interface shoe, it automatically adjusts and sets the audio levels based on how far you are from the camera. I'm gonna let that sink in for a bit. The camera sees you decides on its own based on the information that it has on how far you are from it, and adjusts the microphone sensitivity accordingly. That's crazy good. And the fact that it's ultra compact and can still sound full is very impressive. So right now we have the ECM G1 shotgun microphone on our Sony ZV-E10 with the windscreen because it's kind of windy here. We still have construction happening behind us, arm's length, distance, and this is what it sounds like. And I'm pretty confident that it sounds much better because we're using a super cardioid microphone, which means that it's only picking up a lot of the sound in front of it and rejecting a lot of the other distracting sounds around it. So. After being able to use this for quite some time, here are the biggest points worth considering. The built-in shock mount is great because it saves space. But because it's built in, if, and this is a big if, if it breaks, then it's gonna be really hard to replace or it's not gonna be replaceable at all. Also because the shock mount comes in a smaller form factor and it's built in, it's not the best for extremely shaky situations. But for most use cases, it's totally fine. The auto gain setting is wonderful and super convenient, but it's not for everyone, especially if you're somebody who wants to have more control over your audio settings. However, this isn't really a downside because you can always bypass that by using the aux cable that came with the microphone. Now, as usual, with any products or gear out there, it's not made for everybody. So, who is it for? I believe that the people who would love this are those who want a simple setup that just works. One where you don't need to worry about the settings and something easy to bring around that doesn't get in the way of you creating. So, definitely perfect for beginners because of how easy it is to use, as well as vloggers, especially travel vloggers, because of the compact size and weight. But, which one would you prefer? Fully automatic or manual control settings? Let me know in the comments down below and subscribe!